94.5, Chetland, 1041 Dawson Creek, around the Radio Player Canada app, Peace FM. And I have a special guest in the studio with me right now, Connor from Violet Night. How are you doing? Great. How are you? It's uh, great to have you here. Um, you guys have been really, really busy over the last little while. Um, yeah. But before we get into all that, if people don't know who you are or who Violet Night is, could you give us a little bit of uh, background on that? Sure. Um, Violet Night is a band that we started in 2016. Um, And I'm from the community originally. I think most people listening are probably familiar with me. Um, If not, we have toured the U.S. and we've had a few records come out. Uh, We had an EP come out first called I Hope You're Well. We had a record called Colors of You and a record called Antiheroes. And now we've got a new single called Head Trip and we've got a whole new EP coming out um, in the future after that. Uh, we've had quite a run of success lately with a multitude of things, and I think that really has... People who weren't sure who we were, like after we hit Top 40 on radio, were like, now they definitely, I think, might know who we are. You know, I, I, just because it, it seems like... It, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, you mentioned uh, you guys have been hitting the charts recently with uh, with Antiheroes. How's, how's that been for you? Well, that record, it's been pretty surreal. That record initially, like, it charted to, um, the Antiheroes record was number nine in Canada and 20 in the U.S. And then it's kind of interesting how it all came together with, if you were the ocean going to radio, like ending up on Sirius and in the top 40 and everything else. Um, During the pandemic, I was kind of in a bit of, uh, not in a slump, but I was in a place that just wasn't, I wasn't as focused and motivated and driven as I usually am. And anybody who knows me knows that I'm like, like I'm almost neurotic. Like I'm crazy hardworking, very driven and very motivated. uh, Very, very much the type to, um, to, you know, I want to succeed. And so really to me, it's just a matter of um, if you work hard, I think you can succeed. And I don't think that uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not somebody who believes that circumstance can dictate whether you succeed or not. I really think that, a ba- for example, uh, a band coming from a town like Chetwind, uh, charting in the top 40 with the likes of Imagine Dragons and Harry Styles and 21 Pilots is probably something most people thought would never happen, but we, we did that earlier this year. Um, but when I was in that lull, I fortunately, through our manager, networked with some really incredible people in the industry. And I think we've had a lot of success, but to me, it's always important to remember that I, I, I'm the face and voice of the, the thing, but I'm just one component of a much bigger uh, team. And I'm really grateful to just have uh, those re- there's such incredible people to work with, you know, like if I didn't get the I, w- I was mentored by a fellow named Aaron Allen, and he's like a top 40 writer who kind of mentored me with writing and getting the fire lit in me again. And um, yeah, that was huge. And then our manager reached out to a friend of his who was affiliated with Universal Music. And he was like, why have these guys not been on the radio? Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I mean, we've you know been on the radio, but we haven't really pushed it with the, you know, Sirius and everything else. And the next thing I know, we're on Sirius. And that really, um, it was very inspiring to me. And it's, just crazy to see how powerful something that we created has kind of become and i'm glad it uh i I really believe in the songs and i really love what we do and i'm really glad that the songs are doing something for people you know in that way for sure uh you mentioned working through the pandemic Uh, we're coming of course we're coming out of that now uh Mm -hmm. so what do you guys have like lined up now that we're kind of moving away and being able to do the live shows again well monkey pox is uh airborne so no i'm just kidding (laughs) (laughs) fingers crossed guys yeah uh no now that we've got live shows um at the end of the month i'm moving back to toronto which if you're watching this and it's september i'm in toronto right now uh but so yeah, we've got the new EP coming out. Head Trip is, you know, off doing its thing at radio. We're hoping that it goes to top 40 or 30 or 20. I said if it goes top 10, then I'll get a tattoo of the artwork. Okay. I think even my dad might. I think he might be on board. If he's listening, then, you know, I don't know if he would, but I, we talked about it and we're like, yeah, you know, you know, one of those off, off, offbeat <laughs> off father-son yeah. conversations. Um, 
But yeah, for us next, we really want to be touring. Uh, we've actually, what's surreal to me is we've had uh, we've had record labels offer us deals, and if you told nineteen year old me that was gonna happen, um, he would have crapped his pants for sure. Can I say that on air? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know, you know, try to keep it PG, but uh, I would have lost my mind. And now it's different. The music industry has shifted in a way that I think when the right label comes along with the right offer. And I just think there's a lot of work we can still do independently. And we really like much being uh, the captains of our own ship, so to speak. And I think if independently we can uh, have success at Top 40, then we still have work to do and touring and all that kind of stuff. And really just seeing what comes next. I think... With Head Trip and with all the new songs um, that we have, I can confidently say they are by far the best we've ever done. Like, they are a cut above, and I think they're going to just continue to open more doors for the band, which um, makes me happy because it's a passion project. You know, it's not something I ever... I've never been a guy who did music because I was like, uh, you know, I want to be a celebrity or something. I just really love music and really love what it's given me in my life and I want to provide that for people that are fans of us and just yeah that's really the motivating factor for me for sure uh did you mention that you're doing an EP now yeah so it's it's done but uh it's not out so it really um the next single that comes out will really be dependent on just seeing you know uh head trip Head Trip still's got a lot of life in it, right? We've got some merch coming that's associated with Head Trip, and we've got, you know, a music video that we're gonna film. There's a lot of things that we will do before we, uh, that we, before we move into a new single. It's the the industry is kind of changing in that way where, um, singles are the new culture. You know, albums aren't really a thing anymore, which is unfortunate because I I personally love uh, the LP and listening to LPs, but. As far as what makes the most sense, it's definitely singles. And now singles kind of get serviced out like a whole record used to. And so that's just the game you have to play to be relevant, really, and to, to keep up with the constant, you know, never-ending, keep things moving. Yeah, know? I think this has definitely changed over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it sounds like you, you guys are... You you've worked hard for your success, and mm. uh, you put a lot of a lot, a lot of work in, and that seems to be uh, paying off for you now. Uh, what's the fan feedback been like for Head Trip or overall? Or overall? Overall, I think it's been really positive. I I find a lot of people um, that I come across they find the story really inspiring, and I think that it's lost on me that I have an impact on people when I converse with them sometimes because I don't. Uh, view myself as anything but ordinary, really. You know, I don't have a, a huge ego like that or anything. I just think that it, if you can do positive, do positive. I think that if you can use your existence to positively impact the existence of somebody else in this little pocket of time we're living in together, then you might as well do it. And if music is the way that I can have the broadest effect in that respect, then that's what I'm going to do. But uh, the the feedback for the music has been incredible. I'm, there's a girl in the U.S. that uh, there's multiple fan pages that make memes of us and other things. It's very it's very interesting. Um, but you know, I had one fan reach out and just say like that the music uh, literally saved their life, which is kind of something that you know that's one more person still here because of the songs and I think that really speaks to the power of music w one person or a hundred or whatever and yeah so it's been positive and I mean it seems to only get more and more positive and I would say that we've become a better and better band as time goes on and to your point I, I would say that we're ridiculously hard working for sure we've never had anything handed to us at all and but it doesn't discourage us if anything I love an underdog story, you know. And, for, um, for sure. I think a lot of people see, like, overnight successes, and they don't realize how much work that people have been doing to get to that overnight success mm -hmm. uh, state. But with, with overnight success, how often do they stay relevant for longer than six months? That's true. I mean, name one winner of American Idol besides Kelly Clarkson that has any sort of relevance. Yeah, Fair, right? There you go. I think that all of the bands and all of the artists that are adored and that are are relevant and that are really good are the ones that really just work and just they they're 
I met I met Blink One Eighty Two once. Nice. Actually, I, I met Blink One Eighty Two five times. Actually, <laughs> um, in one of the conversations that I had with their bassist Mark Hoppus, he just said that would like for his advice to me, and this this definitely had a profound impact on me was. Uh, I never had considered myself a super strong singer when we were younger. And he said there was always bands way more talented than them, but they were way harder workers and just too stupid to quit. So many bands they knew were like super talented guys that just didn't have the tenacity. And I think when I adopted that mindset, it just made us, you know, I just, I don't know. I, I enjoy it too. It's like, it's great. It gives me a sense of purpose, and it's definitely uh, the muse for my entire heart. You know, I love doing it, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. And then it's what's really nice, honestly, is like we put out Head Trip, and it's already been streamed in over a hundred countries, and it's like it's already being picked up by big stations in Toronto, and it's like that's insane to me. It's crazy. It's crazy. I don't because I don't. It's not like I sit when I write songs. I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, we're gonna have this many people listening to this song. I better, you know, I, I'm just like, oh, that sounds really cool like i really like that idea or um you know like with head trip uh i'm a guy that i tend to catastrophize sometimes you know my our manager said that to me well he's like yeah he's like you're always catastrophizing you're always like worst case scenario guy like oh this is all gonna blah 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 but like when he said that i became cognizant to the fact that i do that and then it made me able to anyways I was getting on a plane from Calgary to Toronto to record new music, and this is in November, and I was just like walking, kind of like uh, feeling a bit anxious, and when I get anxious, like a good way for me to get it out of my system is to write or whatever, and I was like, I'm on a head trip, I'm feeling violent again, I'm not, and I was like, man, that's a really cool, kind of catchy kind of thing, and then within the span of like 10 to 15 minutes, and then getting on the plane, and then like, firing up my MacBook and like doing stuff on the you know flight uh, I wrote the song and nice. it was done by the time we landed and I was like I l- landed and I well I guess I said manager but I meant like a guy that I there's different people I bounce things off of and one of the guys that I bounce stuff off of was like I sent him just the rough everything that I had kind of come up with and I was like I think this is the best song I've ever written like at the early stages like I was like it's pretty undeniable and he's like man that's good i mean he's sw- he's interject he swore but i'm not going to repeat it obviously but i was like yeah sometimes you just know you know excellent yeah. um where do you see yourself like a year out from here well i'm going to keep going to school i'm in university and i have been since the pandemic started I'm studying psychology in undergrad i was in psychology and business um, no disrespect to people studying business. I think it's great. I think it's awesome. Uh, it just wasn't for me. So I just went fully into psychology. I'm much more um, on that wavelength. And if I do a graduate degree where it stands, I would do graduate degree in psychology to be a psychologist or in law to be a lawyer. Um, but in a year out, honestly, if things keep going the way they've been going, I would I may or may not have to postpone school to just tour and to just do this thing full time because it's it's, uh, you know, like it's becoming, I, I love that it's demanding more of my attention because it's a pretty clear indication that it's working. Um, but it, it's, it's sometimes tough to make those decisions. Like moving to Toronto is, you know, it's far from all my family and everything else. Um, and I love the city. I, I definitely love Vancouver as well. And lots of cities in the States we've been to, but, um, to me, I guess it's really about what's the smartest move. And yeah, so I mean, it's one of those tough things where, yeah, a year from now, I could see the EP will probably be out unless Head Trip, you know, if it goes like, let's say it hits top 10, then that's something that will last quite a while. And it really would prolong the uh, the rolling out of music. But a year from now, I hope we are touring eight to 10 months a year. Um, and it, where I see myself, definitely like, the goal for me is I've never been a guy who's like, I'm going to play in a stadium. The goal is always like, you know, if we can get like a thousand people in a room, fit 500 to a thousand, 1500, you know, like if, you know, if we could, you know, do something like the Queen Elizabeth in Vancouver and sell that out, you know, bands like the national stuff like that. Like I love that the fans of those bands are so passionate about the music and the artist. And it's not a celebrity thing it's more of like i just love what you're doing and i just it connects like to me that 
has always had way more appeal. I know there's obviously more money in playing an arena, but yeah. I've never really been in it for money. Um, I've always really just been in it because, like I said, I love it. Um, and it it gives me a reason to, to get up out of bed in the morning. You know, it's that sense of purpose. The Japanese call it ikigai, and it's that mean, translates to, like, your sense of purpose, your sense of being, your driving um, factor. And for me, it's, it's just always been there. Um, and the older I get, too, the harder it is sometimes to, to think about that. But um, sometimes it's like, well, it's a path of least resistance, you know. And I, I, I've been really enjoying school and, and everything else. But, you know, my parents are like, oh, you've been in school for this long, though, and you're, you know, you're doing well, you're on the dean's list and stuff like that. And I'm at the same time, but I'm like, yeah, but I've been doing music since like I was like 13, yeah, 12. And like, so, you know, it's one of those things where I just have to make that decision. And uh, at the end of the day, it's definitely like, like I said, if music demands that attention, it will, it will receive it for sure. Great. Uh, is there anything else you want to add? Buy our merch. <laughs> Just kidding. No. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Tell us uh, if uh, people are interested in you. Where, where do they? Every, go everybody has been buying our merch. I, yeah. I, I should probably sound ungrateful. We've like, we had two merch drops already, and they sold out like in a couple of days. So, uh, well, close to selling. We have like, I have like five hoodies and eight or nine shirts, and then I've got <clears throat> new long sleeve shirts coming. And fall is coming, and uh, in this area, yeah, fall is here in a few weeks. So. Yep. Uh, so where do people go to if they want to buy that stuff? VioletNightMusic.com And, okay, here's an Easter egg for you. The new merch has already dropped on VioletNightMusic.com slash store. Um, the new long sleeve, but we haven't announced it anywhere. It's been kind of a thing. Our, so our Instagram and our other socials have pretty big followings, but our Twitter doesn't. So I always announce stuff first on Twitter as like a little like, you know. So um, I'll announce it there tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's probably – I think it's really cool. They're really cool long sleeves. I don't – I wish I could wear it. It's one of those things where, like, I love our merch and I think the designs are fantastic. But then I'm like, well, people think I'm a douchebag if I wear <laughs> shirts for my own band. Uh, maybe, you know. Yeah. But I mean, that's like, you know. But, hey, I mean, I could it's, – it's a good conversation starter. It's like, why are you wearing this shirt? It's like, well, I like Stephen King stuff. You know, how do you uh, how do people follow you on social media? Um, well, we could do a how to guide. You know those like wiki how tos. Yeah, they would. So they would open their phones, and they would go to the app of their choosing, be sure. it Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, or TikTok. We're starting on TikTok. Everybody on our team is like Connor. You need to TikTok more, and I'm like, bro. <laughs> I, I'm sorry to anybody out there listening that loves TikToking. I am not a fan. Uh, I'm not a fan of social media in general. I definitely, it's means to an end, right? And yeah. it's a way to engage. And I'm thankful that people care what we have to say on there. Um, if it was up to me, though, somebody else would do it all for me. <laughs> yeah. And I would just uh, I would just be like, that's cool. Um, so I could, yeah, like when I wrote Antiheroes, I took almost six to eight months off of social media just to focus on writing. Yeah. Great idea. Uh, but bad for the algorithm and the overlords on yeah, social media. <laughs> for sure. Definitely weren't thrilled. But, uh, yeah, no. So if you go to Instagram, uh, Facebook is just Violet Night. Instagram, Violet Night Music. If you want to Snapchat at me, at ConnorPull1 is my Snapchat. And we can snap and we can chat. Both of those things are definitely viable options. So, uh, face, yeah, like Facebook. TikTok is Violet Night Music, I believe. And then Instagram is Violet, or no, Twitter is Violet Night Band. But VioletNightMusic.com, VioletNightMusic.com is the place to go because it has links to everything. Um, and I usually explain to people, like if they're unfamiliar, I say Violet is in the color purple and night as in nighttime because we get violent as <laughs> in punching you in the face and night as in darkness a lot. Um, and I, I think that's also like a David Harbour movie or something. Is it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, fair. Um, and he's super popular now because of Stranger Things, obviously. Yeah. 
that's one of those things. And people often misspell my name, like C-O-N-N-O-R, Connor. But I get Coner a lot, or C-O-N-E-R, which is just fantastic. <laughs> um, C-O-N-O-R or C-O-N-N-E-R. Yeah. It just shows how the... Um, the education system is failing us. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I doubt it. I think it's just one of those things where you can spell color two ways and you can spell Connor like 300 ways according to our fan base. So, Excellent. Well, we're going to wrap things up by playing a head trip. Do you want to introduce it to the people out there in Radio Land? The people out there in Radio Land, fasten your seat belts if you're in a vehicle and uh, get ready. This is Head Trip by Violet <laughs> Knight on Peace FM. <laughs> 